Good evening. Welcome to the April 6, 2017 Armstrong School District Board of Directors Open Caucus meeting. Won't you please rise with me for a moment of reflection followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Burdell. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Close. Ms. Lowe. Here. Dr. Lobby. Here. Mr. Mulroy. Mr. Rarick. Mr. Skate. Here. Ms. Walker. Here. The Board of School Directors of Armstrong School District convened an executive session on Thursday, April 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the faculty lounge of West Hills Intermediate School in Kikani for discussion of personnel and collective bargaining. Thank you. Um, first thing on the agenda is the student board representative report, and I believe it's your last one, right? All right, excellent. Let's make it a good one. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Okay, for the West Hills Primary, on April 3rd through the 6th, the third graders are working hard on their ELA PSSA test. April 6th, all students went on a wellness walk for exercise and, ce and celebrated the last day of PSSA testing. On the 10th, they had their, well, they're going to have their <laughs> annual exercise. The students go on an Easter egg hunt, and each egg is an exercise the students get to do. The 21st, they will have a magician assembly, compliments of the PTO. April 24th through the 26th, third graders will take their math PSSA tests. The 24th through the 28th, the mobile AG lab will be visiting. May 5th, the AHS SAD members will be visiting with activities for students that represent good decision making. May 16th, the second graders will participate in an ACMH safety fair. On May 18th, the first grader student's patriotic program is at 2 o'clock. On the 24th of May is a field day. For the West Hills Intermediate, this Friday is the science fair for all of the grades. The district-wide Math 24 competition will be held at the Intermediate. April 21st, there will be a magic show for the junior high slash sixth grade jazz band show. PBIS skating trip is on the 18th. May 8th, the 5th and 6th grade band concert. On the 9th is the beginner band concert. May 10th is the gifted fair. On the 11th, the 6th grade is the move up day. May 15th is the choral concert. And on the 18th is field day competitions. For Lenape Elementary, the students and staff spent two weeks in March collecting for St. Jude's Hospital. The theme was Stomp Out Childhood Cancer one step at a time. They collected $1,500. Read Across America Week was spent with students earning I, caught, I Got Caught Reading tickets. Students used the tickets to vote for which teacher, Mr. McClafferty or Mr. Golab, would shave his beard off at a school-wide assembly. Because of the large number of tickets earned, both teachers had, to, had their beard shaved by students. <laughs> for Armstrong Junior High, the PSSA Motivation and Rewards there was a fundraiser for a pirate game that will be on the 18th of May. And they are in the process of planning a, an award ceremony. For Armstrong Senior High, on March 24th, we hosted a hawkathon and rose over $15,000 for four different families in our community with cancer. The Leo Club organized a breakfast with the Easter egg bunny, <laughs> Easter bunny on April 1st. Cap and gowns were distributed today to the seniors. The lip dub is going to be filmed the same day as prom this year. The life skills prom is on the 21st and is held at the Indiana County Country Club. <laughs> Sorry. The National Honor Society induction is on the 25th at 7 p.m. On the 25th is also the DUI simulator from State Farm. Prom is on April 28th. The Grand March is going to be held at the Catanning Riverfront Park and prom will be at Lobby Hall. May 5th 
is whenever the SAD is going to be coming to the West Hills Primary for fun games. Baseball, softball, track, track and field, and boys volleyball, their seasons are in progress right now. The baseball and softball teams are playing on their new fields. The two nights of the musical, The Beauty and the Beast, were near sellouts. And my sister Olivia got second in the state for bowling, and we will be going to Nashville, Tennessee on June 24th. Thank you. Wow, that was, uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to give Noah a hard time. <laughs> But Alex, I just want, on behalf of the school board and the administration, I want to thank you for doing such a fantastic job uh, for serving as the uh, board representative. So um, best of luck to you in the future. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how some good things, maybe some not so good things work in, in, a, in a, a government process like this. But uh, so best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um any other central office reports? Yeah, I'll turn over to uh, Dr. Slosky and Dr. Williams to introduce some of our map to get through the process of how we uh, selected the map. Okay, thank you. Um, with us this evening are three teachers from the Armstrong School District. This is Barb Carnahan, teacher from Elderton Elementary, uh, Christine Laszlo, sixth grade teacher from Shannock Elementary, and Dr. Deb Snyder, a mathematics teacher at Armstrong High School. And they're here this, with us this evening to share um, the work that the math committee participated in during the 16-17 school year, which actually began um, in June of last summer. So uh, they're here to share an overview of the materials that they've selected and how they actually came to this decision. Mm -hmm. okay. Good evening. I'm Barb Carnahan. Um, I do teach third and fourth grade departmentalized at Alderton Elementary for math. Um, I, this is my third adoption for the math series. And since we do it every eight to 10 years, it's kind of exciting that I'm, I'm still with it. And I just love it. Uh, as we start the adoption process, everybody starts looking at their own grade level materials. And then as we expand out to see what they offer there, then we start looking at more transitions from other grade levels because we have to look at the foundations that the primary um, offer to our grade and then what we need to prepare for the next grade. So we start looking at all those things and lots of discussion and coming to the greater good because everyone has their own opinions, but we have to look what's best for our children that we're going to do. So when Dr. Solosky asked us to come speak, I was glad to because I really think that Envision is going to help our children grow mathematically um, because we've used it in the past and I think it's even better, a lot more substance for it and rigor is what we need, especially right now, as we're in the middle of PSSA testing and we know what our children need to do. Um, my aspect is more, since I'm three to four, I have background in developmental mathematics. There's a lot of good pieces in the K to three program. Some of the basic things that, as we get into the upper grades for Chris and Deb, that um, those foundational pieces that they take for granted are such big things. There's subitizing, which is a big word for when you play dice and you look at the die and there's five there and we know that it's five, that's something that kids have to learn in order to be able to get their math facts straight as they can count on instead of counting all. So that's just a piece as they keep going. And this program is so rich in those kinds of things. The transitions are smoother. Um, I know in the past, as a third grade teacher, um, second grade it was a huge jump from second to third. And I think they've ironed that out in this program this year because there is more rigor in the primary grades as they come up through. Um, a lot more that I noticed is the explanations of student work that they need to do. Instead of just asking them to do it rotely, I know as I learned to do when I was young, um, they're asked how they can do something. And anytime you have to explain something and the children are, not, are the same, that it makes it clear to them. So even at a younger age, they don't have to write it, but as they get older, they start writing their explanations in, in addition to the verbal aspect of it too. Um, the last thing is there's so many materials for reteaching, extension. Um, there's too much to use, actually, and things, but it helps us pick and choose. I'm involved in after school tutoring in third, fourth grade also, and it's interesting that there's so much available, and the problem solving aspects that I've found that um, there's many ways to teach one concept that we don't all think the same way. And so having those opportunities for children to learn in different ways is a positive thing. I've seen so much success in the after-school tutoring using the program 
and then something clicks for them in one of the ways we've shown them how to do it, and that's the excitement of this. So I hardly endorse this. I really think this is where we need to be for the school district. And I'll let Chris talk about the upper grade. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Laszlo. I teach at Shannock Elementary. Um, being on the sixth grade uh, committee, there were three of us, Krista Ritzert, Greg Hedgelin, and myself. Um, we sat in a different perspective, I guess, because sixth grade could either fall with K through five, six through eighth as a middle school. Um, we met actually an extra time to really uh, dig into the different books that we had available, and we finally decided that we would like to go with the decision, same decision as the seventh, six, as the seventh and eighth grade, which is the um, big ideas math. Um, our decision mainly, uh, what we saw as compared to our old text, which was um, Pearson, and it just didn't match up to what we needed as far as uh, getting ready for the PSSAs and transitioning to seventh grade, which is a big concern for our sixth graders. This book is not as there's not as much, I'm going to use the term fluff, and they need, it, they need something, and I think that would help that transition to go into seventh grade. Um, so we decided on this one, and uh, it makes them think more critically, which we have found in the last two years with the new standards that that is where we need to be. So we have gone two years using multiple different like, textbooks to try to make sure that they got what they needed for the testing and to be ready for seventh grade. So we're in, you know, we're hopeful that um, we proceed with a new textbook and the big ideas, which is the green one um, right on the end, and it goes along with the seventh and eighth as Deb is going to explain next. That's all I have, thank you. I'm Deb Snyder from Armstrong High School, and I want to go over the process that we began with and how we selected the text. Uh, we met last June as a math committee. Uh, Mike Komenos put out a, an email and said, anyone interested in how the math department is, or how the math curriculum is going to proceed in our future should come to these meetings. And, and so we met as a committee um, looking at the future of the mathematics department at Armstrong School District. Uh, we met first to see what are the needs of our students and where we're going to go with that. After you decide what courses you're going to offer, what is the best thing for our, of course, test scores, what is the best thing to get our kids ready for a trade, what is the best thing to get our kids ready for college, once you determined where our district is going, then we invited publishers in to present and show us their wares. And we tried to line up where our district is going mathematically with what they had to offer. So we, we met with the, uh, the publishers the first time, and then we met together again as a department or as a committee and we discussed it and is what does this one have to offer us and is that where we want to go what does this one have to offer us and maybe we want to go that direction so we were always trying to find the best curriculum to match where we wanted to go as a school district um, we ha invited publishers back in as we met and discussed and where are we going and we finally decided on uh, for seventh and eighth, ninth, um, algebra one, algebra two, and geometry. We decided to go with a big ideas series. Um, one thing we really liked about this, and you can, when you look at these, you'll see, there is a gentleman, Ron Larson, and anybody that's ever dealt with math books, uh, he is a fantastic author. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever read a math book. Uh, my students, I don't think, believe in such a thing. But math books are, if you can get a readable math book where a kid that maybe is in cyber 
or maybe taking a summer school that they can actually sit and read and follow an example step by step, then that is the kind of, of book or text that I want to use as a resource. Because maybe the way I've presented it might not be exactly the way the student gets it. So they have that option of looking at those examples the way uh, Dr. Larson presents it. I, I'm very pre um, impressed with him as an author. We have used his Province Stats books for years. Um, his calculus book we have used the last, mm, well, since we adopted the last time. Uh, he just has a very readable text and a very, uh, there's a lot of good, good, ex solid examples and many types of examples. So that type of thing is what we were looking for. And when we decided to go with big ideas, I was very thrilled that we were going to have the benefit of, a, of an author that, that I've been a fan of for a number of years. Um, again, we, we looked at the higher levels as well as up through geometry to see if we can be um, consistent across the board and so that the, the transitions for the kids from course to course to course are easy rather than more difficult. Um, if you have any questions for me on the, the process, if I wasn't clear enough on how we did it, uh, I'll be glad to answer them. If you, anybody? Any questions? Is anybody able to formulate a question about <laughs> math? <laughs> sure you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does sound like a great process. Sounds like you did your due diligence, searched the publishers, you know, did everything that, that was important to do and came up with a really good solution. So you guys all seem very excited about it. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is, in my opinion, is, is um, like you, you, you hit on it, is preparation for after school. So whatever that may be, you know, whether it's the trades or college or whatever, um, is to really give them that foundation they can build upon, so. Well, our, our math texts, too, are, are our resources. Our, of course, our teachers are first and foremost, and, and the curriculum that we've developed is, is where, we're, where we're expected to, or where we're expecting to have great things. And then we tried to pick the best resource for our curriculum. So uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can always email me, or I'll, I'll be glad to explain any of the process we went through. Could you add something? Just thank you for all the time you spent looking for extra students. All right. <laughs> no, you're welcome. <laughs> We're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other administrative reports? Yeah, we have one, uh, one other uh, update. Um, we, we begin to, to plan for the summer and, and some of the construction activities we have uh, going on within the district. There may be a need to change the school calendar. And uh, Mr. Perry can explain some of the specifics, uh, potentially an after Labor Day start to accommodate some of the things we have going on. Good evening. Uh, we'd like to present. Uh, an option for this year's calendar um, dealing with Senate or um, Shanog Valley specifically uh, we would like to move their end date back five days so the last student day would be May 23rd um, this would still meet the 180 day requirement and it would also meet the hourly requirement of 900 hours for elementary they would still ha they would have 971 hours so they are well above that requirement. This would require us adding two additional Act 80 days for Shanock Valley teachers, and um, that would be for this year to give five days. For next year, we would like to, for the district, move the start date of the 1718 calendar back. Um, or, um, to, or excuse me, forward to um, September 6th after Labor Day. That would still get us out at June 8th, meeting all the requirements of um, time and days, and also contractually meeting all the requirements for the different groups. January 15th, uh, we have on the current calendar that was adopted is on the day that is off. We would move that day to an Act 80 day, that is uh, Martin Luther King Day. We've done that in the past. March 26th, um, we would ask that that be a, an instructional day. It was a snow makeup day. And um, 
those are the big changes in that calendar. Anyone have any questions? Big change. Big change, but that frees up um, <clears throat> almost three weeks for uh, the construction. John, does that leave us with, leave us with four planned snow day or snow four, Yeah, snow four day. snow days, yes. Well, we have the winter we had this year would be in good shape. Would be in great shape, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this, I mean, obviously this is something that has to be done for the project. So uh, does anybody else have any questions or concerns? When's the last day of school? For which year? For, for 18. For 18 would June be June 8th. 8th. That would be a Friday. Well, yeah, with all the work that's going on, I mean, there's, there's, probably, there's much, many options. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? There's nothing further to see. You know, before we start, I did want to bring attention back to something Alexa talked about. Um, great things at all of the schools, um, but raising $15,000 at the dance a -thon is phenomenal. And I just want to congratulate you if you take that congratulatory, congratulatory note back to the student body because, um, and the faculty and the teachers that were involved, the administrators, it's just a, it's just a fantastic uh, thing that you guys did for the community. So thank you. Okay. Um, so now we're going to approval for the agenda for Monday. So, okay. Um, the first thing that I need uh, consensus to add to the agenda is, would I do that for the minutes? So um, I'm asking for consensus uh, to add minutes for the special meeting of March 2nd, 2017, the open caucus session of March 9th, and the regular meeting of March 13th to the agenda on Monday. Uh, consensus? Okay, next on the agenda for next week is bills. Uh, do I have consensus to add the food service fund for March and the athletic fund for February? That's it, um, on Monday as well. Consensus? Okay. Uh, personnel is handled in executive sessions, so um, I don't need to do that, correct, Linda? Keep looking over to you to make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> uh, education, we have four items. Um, uh, let the administration kind of run down through those if they want to highlight any of those notes. Just had to uh, Dr. Lunch to comment on the state competition for the Junior Academy Sciences. Uh, we have a team of students, two teachers, I believe. compete against other teams across the state. Good. Ed three is an annual uh, promotion in the school year sessions for existing students. And Ed four is going to have excellent results that we just heard about. Okay. So do I have consensus to add Ed one through four to the agenda on Monday? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, business items one through five. Uh, business one is the summer food service program. Oh, I'll let you. There's some things you may want to highlight. Go ahead. I can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, business one's just um, we, we did the last month. Now we're adding West Hills Primary School for the summer food program. Business two, the technology item. Um, we had some funds became available due to some savings we had in some areas. The technology budget. So we talked and we're going to look to. There's 254 desktop computers, and I believe it's going to go into the elementary computer labs, uh, replace some of our older equipment there. Uh, just, shut, uh, just wrote $200,000 for that. It's on state contract, but uh, as I said, it's money that's freed up with some other things we had savings in, so it's within the budget. Uh, business three, participation areas, cooperative purchase program, something we do every other year. We do approve this and just allows us to buy things cooperatively with other schools to get better pricing. <laughs> Four, we went out and did bids for athletic supplies. I think we had six or seven companies that respond to us. We're just looking to approve those amounts, just shy of $24,000, and six different companies will share in that amount. And lastly, under business five, we've talked about this a couple times, Ron, I'm just looking for approval to 
move the excess plan com money, which is about $3.7 million, uh, over to a construction fund. And actually, it's going to go in a money market, S&T Bank, generate about seven, seven basis points, 70 basis points right now until we have to move it into checking. We are starting to get some bills for a couple of construction projects. April 25th, we'll also be having the, the bond proceeds transferred into there as well. So um, between $2.2 million we had left over from the construction, which is already with at s and is 3.7. That's going to handle the stadium project. And the bond proceeds will be handling the Jonathan Valley renovations. Any and questions? I, and I can pick it back on the next one. Yeah, I was just going to ask you to do that. Yeah. Um, parts of the grandstand sy system, um, as you recall, we, you know, we got with the architect. We're starting to do the design process. We had a public meeting this week um, on the stadium project. The first thing that we need to purchase is actually the grandstand system. Uh, this is a 3,000 seat grandstand. It has a big word that I learned, a vomitory in the middle, which is actually the way that folks can go down through the middle and uh, leave the stand. There's three different ways to get in and out of it. Um, the pride the top of the line, they're not going to rust. They're going to be very safe. Um, no personal seats. They're all bleachers. We decided to go that route just because it gets more seating there. But the magic number of getting over $3,000. That's when the field states and things like that one looked at us to host the playoff games. The original budget for this, when we presented the budget, was around $1.2 million for the bleachers. It's coming in less than that, so we're starting to see, hopefully, each part of this come under budget. So we're looking for approval for that on Monday. Great. Any questions? So, yes. Mr. Zaviva, you asked me to remind you that you wanted to make a statement about Oh, People yeah, looking yeah. At from the community summit meeting on Monday, the presentation that they did that evening is now on our website, on the front page of our website. So if anybody wants to go to our website and click on the tab on the main page, I'll play the video for you. Okay. So um, if there aren't any other questions, I would look for um, consensus to add Business items one through five, as well as C1 construction to the agenda on Monday. Okay. Uh, student transportation services, uh, just one item, run of the mill, approval of bus drivers. Do I have a consensus to add that to the agenda? Okay, great. Um, and then some policy items uh, one through five. I'll let our solicitor. Um, just a quick highlight. Um, Two of the policies have to do with changes in some federal mandates regarding nutrition and wellness. And the other policy, which I'll just highlight quickly initially, is a sort <coughs> of a change in state law. And it's being done to assist school districts because we seem to all be having growing populations of children with diabetes attending school. Um, the state policy, diabetes, excuse me, the diabetes management policy that you have there, the um, main focus of that policy is to have mandated training <coughs> for various categories of employees. That training depends upon the level that they are at. Um, the type of training they need has been put out by the health department as well as PDE. Um, it's going to allow students to self-administer and self-test, kind of like what we did with the EpiPens. Um, same process in terms of instructions from their physician, verification by the nurse that they know what they're doing, etc. cetera. Um, and also, school districts will be allowed to have a non-health non -health trained person be trained to assist in administering and testing and dealing with emergencies in regard to diabetic children. In other words, it no longer has to be a nurse. Um, the nurse is involved in the training. It can't be forced upon any employee. The employee has to volunteer to undertake this task, and they have to be <coughs> annually trained. Every year they have to be so that's the highlights on that state law. The, the other one is basically wellness nutrition and how the cafeteria operates. 
Um, key components is a wellness program and its promotion to deal with uh, children to hopefully develop better eating habits, eliminate obesity, and lifetime skills and attitudes toward exercise and eating. Uh, it too also has nutritional requirements that our cafeteria is following, um, as well as food that is not coming from the cafeteria that may be part of fundraisers, by the way. Uh, the other, again, is training for various levels of cafeteria <coughs> employees, and also how billing and delinquent accounts are to be handled. Um, like most districts, we've moved to the way parents can deposit funds into an account for their children's lunches, and how you are to handle warnings and still giving a child a lunch if they don't have enough money in their account, and how you collect delinquent accounts. And those policies are pretty lengthy, but that's generally what they are accomplishing for our staff to follow. Any questions? Looking for consensus to add policies one through five to the agenda. <coughs> right. um, uh, anything, okay, that was it. We're gonna go back to the main agenda. I do apologize, I forgot to um, offer the public a chance to uh, offer any comments on agenda items. Doug, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just noticed that, I'm like, oops, I forgot to go out to the public, but. Okay, anybody else? Public comments? Doesn't it say Doug comment now on the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> the public comment? <laughs> okay, uh, back to the regular agenda. Other, anything under other? Any board members or administrators? I'll look for a motion, a second to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Mr. Burdell, second by Dr. Lobby. All those in favor? Aye. All right, that's it. Thank you.